Well, you might be wondering how it's possible to spend 45 minutes talking about one picture. Uh, I must say that it had occurred to me as well. Uh, <laughs> but this is a picture that's got a lot going on in it, and, and it really does say a lot about the history of medicine in Bath in the 18th century, and, and uh, all sorts of things that we can learn from it. So, um, you, some of you have probably seen the original. It's um, on the on the staircase hanging uh, in the uh, mineral water hospital. Uh, of course, this is now the Royal National Hospital for Rheumatic Diseases, but I'm not going to call it that because it's far too long in title. But when it started, it was known as the Bath General Hospital. Uh, so in order to avoid confusion, I'm just going to call it the MIN because I think it's, it's easier. But those of you who've been in the hospital, been up the stairs, will probably know she's there, but maybe you were on your way to see a patient or you were a patient there, so you were, were sort of dashing past it. So I'm going to sort of look at it in, in detail and uh, talk about various aspects of it. So, first of all, um, you'll notice that there are five uh, figures here. Uh, the figures on the left are patients, and the uh, two gentlemen uh, on the right side are a physician and a surgeon. And most people know William Oliver's portrait because he appears on, on a well-known biscuit. Uh, the same profile, but the other gentleman is, is Jerry Pierce, and uh, the three patients were labelled on the painting uh, as suffering from rheumatism, the lady on the left, uh, the gentleman was suffering from palsy, and the boy had leprosy. So that was what they, they, they described these problems as in the 18th century, and I'll come back to them uh, to those patients later on. But let's start with the top, with, with the artist. Uh, this is a self-portrait of William Hoare, who, who uh, painted that picture probably around about 1760. And uh, it was exhibited at the Society of Arts uh, in 1761, and, and it got very good reviews. And then he then gave it to the hospital as a gift in 1762. <coughs> uh, you might say, well, why, why was Hall wanting to give the hospital a, a, a painting? Well, first of all, he was taking quite a lot of interest in raising money for it, uh, and he, he subscribed money to, uh, to the general fund of the hospital. Um, but also, because hospitals in those days were uh, almost like art galleries, and uh, Exeter Hospital is another example of that. But um, he had studied in, in uh, Italy with a man called Giuseppe Grissoni, who was an artist, uh, and he had uh, been to Rome, I think he was in Rome for about nine years, and during that time he would have gone around looking at old masters. Now. Um, this is not the only picture by Hoare in the, in the hospital. Uh, there's a rather fine painting uh, entitled Hygieia, um, who was uh, a goddess but of, of health and hygiene, where we get the word hygiene from. Uh, and uh, he also painted this, which is uh, a portrait of one of the early treasurers of the hospital, uh, a man called Daniel Danvers, who was a banker, actually a Bristol banker, uh, but he managed the uh, finances of the hospital in the early years of, of the foundation. Uh, and it's a rather fine picture because it shows him actually at work and, and he's probably transcribing something, maybe a, an invoice or something that someone sent him uh, wanting payment and he's it, transcribing it into uh, one of the ledgers of the hospital. So what? Two pictures there by Hoare and then pictures by other artists, but uh, it was a very good place to have pictures because not that the patients would be buying your pictures or commissioning you to paint their portraits, they didn't have any money. The, the patient, all of the patients were very poor people. Uh, that was the reason they were there. If you had a lot of money, you could come to Bath and you could be treated in, in your lodgings um, and, uh, or in an inn. So, um, they are poor patients, but the people giving money to the hospital, the, the donors and the subscribers, uh, were all rich and very influential. 
and so it was an ideal place to show off your your paintings. And, and Hoare, in fact, became a, the most successful Bach portrait painter uh, before the arrival of Gainsborough, which was about 20 years after uh, Hoare had come. So you might also say, that it was Hoare related to the, the banking, uh, the banking of Hoare, because uh, those of you who've been to Stourhead will know that, that the, the, that's the family seat of the Hoare family. Uh, the answer is no, he wasn't, but he was very friendly with, with Henry Hoare. Henry Hoare was also a governor of the hospital, but uh, as far as we know, there was no relation. And in fact, Hawes, uh, William Hawes' uh, daughter married into the Hoare family, so mm -hmm. there, there was eventually a connection between the two, but not uh, the artist. He was born in, in, in High, in Suffolk, uh, and came to Bath, I think, in 1738. So that's a bit about the artist. Uh, and then we'll have a look at various features in this painting. And first of all, there's uh, behind uh, William Oliver's head is this plan of the hospital. Uh, that's, we've still got a, a, an example of that uh, in the hospital itself. There's, there were, lots of these were produced when they were trying to get money to build the hospital. And uh, it's got, this is a plan by John Wood, who designed the hospital. Uh, and um, <coughs> it wasn't built quite in this way, it's more of a parallelogram than a square, but nevertheless, uh, this does give you an idea of, of what uh, the hospital looked like when it was uh, first built. And I, I've done a sort of Photoshop uh, version of, of the hospital, it's actually it's been scrunched up for some reason, but um, it should be longer than that, but anyway. Uh, don't look at this too much because it's, it's not a, a genuine print of the 18th century. But uh, <laughs> the windows would have would look, they would have been glazed in that way, and patients would have gone in through the through the front door. And that was eventually uh, closed off when uh, the wing, which is to the west of the hospital, which is where the main entrance and the main hall is now, when that was built. So the hospital uh, was then turned into a two-wing hospital rather than this central one. Um, the um, interior of the hospital, we don't have any, any pictures of the interior of the hospital, but this is uh, almost contemporary, it's a little bit later, it's the end of the 18th century. This is a ward in the Middlesex Hospital, and uh, it's uh, typical of, of hospitals at that time. And in fact, it, it's typical of hospitals even when I qualify. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think wards change very much. But nowadays, of course, uh, we're gradually going towards small six bedded wards and, and even smaller than that. Uh, the, the beds were made of wood, and that was a bit of a problem because uh, they harbored bed bugs. And there, there are lots of um, descriptions of the hospital having a problem with bed bugs in the, in the various records of the men uh, in the 18th century. Uh, heating was, of course, done by coal, coal fires. The coal was ordered from a, a collier in uh, Timsbury, so it was sort of brought across from Timsbury. Uh, we've even got the, the cost of, of uh, how much uh, the various sort of heat and light was. Uh, lighting uh, was done mainly with oil lamps, although they used candles as well. Um, and in, in 1749, uh, there was a total of 149 gallons of rapeseed oil uh, which was ordered, and um, I think that was, uh, I'm going to look up the price of that, but um, yes, uh, that uh, cost the hospital 19 pounds, 7 shillings, and threepence farthing, uh, which in today's money is about 4,000 pounds. So, but I suppose, you know, to light a hospital for £4,000 is the bad game, uh, although it wasn't a particularly large hospital in those days. I don't know what it costs now to, to light them in. It'd be difficult to know because of all the other electrical gadgetry and things. But anyway, that's uh, how it was lit and how it was heated. Um, now, that, the other thing was that there, there were no mineral water baths in the hospital. There were, there were sort of bathtubs, and they were down in the basement. The hospital had three stories. Uh, it had a basement story where there was a brewery and a bakery uh, and what were called the houses of offices, which in fact were, were, were toilets, um, although they were probably pretty primitive toilets. 
Uh, and then the, the servants' quarters were in the basement, and there was a laboratory, <coughs> not for diagnostic purposes, but for uh, compounding medicines, because they made most of their medicines in the hospital itself from herbs that were were brought in. Either they were either um, sourced from a wholesale pharmacist in London, uh, and again we we have the the details of that in the hospital records and. Uh, or, or they were sourced locally uh, from women who went out and picked herbs in the countryside. So, uh, so that was that was what was going on in the basement. Then the ground floor, uh, there was uh, a room for the surgeon and a room for a physician, <coughs> and also they, they had a resident member of staff um, called the resident apothecary. So he's like a junior hospital doctor, um, and he was the only doctor who actually got paid. Uh, the physicians and surgeons who attended the hospital did so in purely honorary fashion. But I'll come back to that in a minute when we're talking about a little bit more about Oliver and Mr. Pierce. And then upstairs on the, on the top floor of the hospital there were five wards uh, and there were two on the ground floor as well. So there were a total of seven wards. This was in, still in John Wood's lifetime. Uh, and you, they would hold up to 108 patients. So it was, it was quite a lot of patients in the hospital. And it was, it was mostly full. Uh, there was even a waiting list at one point, which you know, we think of waiting list as being a problem in the National Health Service, but the problem in the 18th century as well. Now, because it was, and originally there were no mineral water bars in the hospital, patients had to go to the King's Bath in the, in the centre of the city, and most of them had to walk there, um, and, but those that couldn't, and quite a lot of uh, the patients were uh, sufficiently paralysed or, or had sufficiently bad arthritis to not be able to get there on, uh, by walking. So they, the hospital commissioned uh, three of these sedan chairs, or closed bathing chairs, which were built actually by the, the hospital carpenter. And uh, there's a, a, an etching of uh, somebody being carried in one of these chairs, and the, the hospital employed its own chairman, uh, who wore the livery of the hospital. We, we don't quite know what the livery looked like, because there's, there's nothing left to show for that, but, but we do know what these uh, closed bathing chairs look like, because there's still one in the hospital. And uh, it's a, in a rather delicate uh, state now, it's been repaired a number of times, but it is uh, probably the only, the only one of its kind anywhere. Uh, <coughs> now, today, of course, the hospital looks a little bit different from how it did in, when John Wood designed it. Uh, there was no top story. That, that was added on in, seven, in the 1790s. Uh, and also, there was no Milson Street then. Uh, if you see where the telephone boxes are, that was where the city wall ran across. So patients would have looked out on the city wall and then over the, those upstairs, in the wards upstairs would have been able to look over the ward uh, and open fields. So Milsom Street was, was just, just pasture land. Uh, on this side of the wall, where the, the first set of bollards are, was the town ditch. And uh, that wouldn't have been a very nice place to go because the, the hospital sewers emptied into the town ditch. Uh, but that didn't put them off choosing to, a little bit further to the right, choosing that side as a burial ground for patients who died in the hospital. So that must have been a bit unpleasant, bur uh, burying these, these patients uh, in the town ditch with the sewage discharging just along the road. So um, that's, that's really um, giving you a little bit about the hospital and in its early days and what it was like. So I, I now want to turn to William Oliver. Uh, according